Our guitar is getting better. I keep hearing that the guitarists of today are head and shoulders above the guitarists of the previous generation. Things like sweep picking are no longer fancy techniques save for the greats, but are now the new norms. And if you can't sweep, you're left in the dust. But is this true? Are they really getting better? Or is this just something we mindlessly repeat because we've heard it around so often? So for a while, I thought it was a regression in guitar playing when the technical bar went up because I felt like suddenly everybody could sweep, whereas before only 2% of people could sweep. But I mean, now I think we're at a point where that stuff has caught up and just basic level guitar players are way better. So what could be contributing to this transformation? Well, let's start from the beginning. The guitar's ancestors came to Europe from Egypt and Mesopotamia. The name guitar comes from the ancient Sanskrit word for string, tar. The six string variant didn't appear until the late 17th century. It wasn't until the beginning of the 19th century that you could see the modern acoustic guitar begin to take shape. The electric guitar was born when pickups were added to Hawaiian and jazz guitars in the 1920s. This song is called El Maestro and was composed by Louis D. Milan during the late Renaissance in 1536. It's incredibly hard to imagine a time when this instrument was new, and hearing this being played at a theater must have been nothing short of mind-blowing. But was this the norm at the time? Virtuoso musicians couldn't exactly go on YouTube and find out how to read music. They needed to be born wealthy enough to afford the top schools in Europe before gaining access to any kind of real knowledge. Anyway, sweeping, uh, to me, briefly, is, you know, going across the strings mm. instead of the regular alternate picking. Most guitar players play up and down picking. Frank Gambale is often credited with the popularization of the sweep picking technique. As you can see, he knows it inside and out, and he claims to have invented it. I claim to be the originator because I, I wrote the book, the yeah. method, exposed it to the world, and took it to the moon. Guitarists today have taken this to a whole new level. Bands like Polyphia are leading the charge of a new wave of fusion guitar, and both their players are nearly untouchable for only being born in 1993. Listen to the solos from their song Crush that was featured on Nail the Mix. It's hard to imagine any guitarist pulling off solos like this in the 80s or 90s, let alone at the age of 25. Um, I started playing violin at the age of three, and then at 10, I saw my dad pick up a guitar, and apparently he played, and I had no idea. And he's been playing all of his life, but didn't play for the first 10 years of my life. And then I saw him do that, and I was like, wow, that's way cooler than violin. So that's how I started. For me, Pretty much my dad, same thing as Tim. Um, I was 10 years old and I walked into a room and he was playing guitar uh, really well. And I pretty much just thought to myself, I wanna learn how to do that too. Only 15 years under their belt still makes it hard to explain how they're so close to the top of their game in the guitar world. And what about Jason Richardson? tore up the metal world with Born of Osiris, Chelsea Grin, and All Shall Perish before releasing his solo album at the mystifyingly young age of 24. 24? Yeah! 24! Well, I always had instruments around the house, always. Like, always, because my dad's a musician, so they've always just kind of been, like, chilling there. And I've seen videos of me playing a piano before I could even walk, like literally just like a little small octave or two and just like literally banging on it for like and not making any sense at all. Just a baby literally banging on a piano. Uh, and that was actually the first instrument I picked up or I first started learning. Guitar is fourth. And that's the one that just ended up working the best. So I stuck with that. 
Guitar Pro has revolutionized the way music is written. You don't need to know a DAW in order to lay down an awesome riff anymore. There was a little while there where I really was starting to question what the hell was going on. That time period when Guitar Pro started to take over yeah. and players stopped playing, kind of. It was a really weird time period where people could play less well but better at the same time. Like, they could play faster, but they sucked. It hadn't, like, caught up, I guess. I wrote out all of Behold and XIV and Guitar Pro, every single instrument. I like yeah. to write out something really crazy and then force myself to learn it and not yeah. like, really change a whole lot because it sounds really sick. That's how the end of Behold was written, that very last solo. Awesome. I, wrote, I wrote it out. I was like, fuck, fuck. Can't do this. <laughs> I have to learn this now. I, for one, am grateful for all the guitarists who can work their way through Guitar Pro. I've written a few songs in it myself, and it's just fun as hell. But the duality here is a subtle one. Some could call Jason's writing robotic, and I can't imagine anyone defending how natural some of today's modern technical death metal has become. A tool is a tool, and when a great artist knows the ins and outs of their instrument and music, they can be vastly improved by technology. A guitarist who hasn't practiced won't ever be able to achieve the 30 second note runs they think sound great played by a computer. What else could be contributing to this phenomenon? Is the internet's democratization of ideas bringing formerly sacred techniques to the layman? Are today's musicians being influenced by the commonplace editing techniques of the modern recording process? How many albums have you heard with an amazing sounding guitarist that were actually recorded one note at a time? Or are we just fooled by recency bias? What about the golden age of shred in the mid to late 80s? Give me an L! L! Give me an I! I! Give me a C! C! Give me a K! K! Give me an S! S! What's that spell? Flex! That's right, Lex! 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 Oh yeah, remember when I said it was hard to imagine someone playing like this in the 80s? Here's Jason Becker at 19, in 1988. This is obviously goofy, but what would this have been like with modern recording techniques? Here's the deal. The greats of any generation are greats, and looking at them doesn't give you an accurate picture of the situation. What we're interested in is the average. Can the average guitarist of 2018 play better than the average guitarist of 1988, 1978, 1968, and so forth? Well, let's lay out the arguments on both sides. Cons. The greats of the past are great by today or any other standard. For example, Jason Becker, Marty Freeman were sick in 1988 and they're still sick in 2018, especially when you consider what they were working with. You're often being tricked by editing. Learn to listen for this stuff to have the full story about how sick the guitarist actually is. Recording at half speed, one note at a time, or using guitar VSTs can result in some great sounding albums. But you'll hear it a mile away when they try and pull this off live. The best of the best don't need to do that stuff. That's how they lay down parts that are technically brilliant and full of feel. Most importantly, just because you can doesn't mean you should. We've all heard lots of bands that shove pointless shred into songs because they want to show off. Nobody cares, and this isn't good music. Pros. YouTube has put every single guitarist you've ever idolized up close and personal, making imitation easier than ever. You can then take that and create your own videos and inspire your peers to compete. The ease of owning your own home studio means you can put out music faster. The faster you put out music, the faster you get critiques, the better the next thing will be. Creating a snowball of improvement that average players are taking advantage of now. Hell, you don't even need a studio. Just throw your iPhone on a tripod and put up a solo you did on Instagram. You're gonna get results, and you're probably gonna get like 25 likes, and people are gonna love it. They're gonna lose their shit. 
So what do you guys think? Are guitarists getting better? Well, let me know in the comments below. Let's get a conversation started. And if you're not already, subscribe to our YouTube channel where we've got content from the best guys in the audio industry. And you're going to learn a whole lot. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.